Fast Forward Productions. The women are speaking. Today on the podcast, we are talking about something I've literally never said before. And I know that I said I wouldn't be marketing with any sort of sales figures this year, but something kind of crazy happened. And I do want to share why this happened. It's one tip, one trick. It's super easy. Every single one of you can do this. And when I activated this in my business, you guys, the most unbelievable thing happened. And yes, we hit $550,000 in one month. You're not going to believe it. Let's dive into how. guys, welcome back to The Unfiltered Entrepreneur. I'm your host, Ashley Pollard. If you're wondering about this incredible episode, buckle up, get a notebook out, because I'm telling you something I typically never share. And that is that one month, I made $550,000. And do you want to know why I never tell that story? Because it's not fucking true. This title isn't fucking true at all. There is not one month that I scale to $550,000. And I definitely wouldn't be able to do it with one tip. I can guarantee you that. Now, why on earth would I do a podcast about how to scale to $550,000 with one tip? Because I am testing you. I'm very curious about how the listens of this episode are going to unfold. And I will be sharing on my Instagram because here's the thing. We're all trying really hard to push against this idea of like, you know, selling with money figures, which I'm so disgusted by, or, you know, this idea of like pushing too hard and these like massive hustle ideas. And trust me, I'm so over it too. But why does this stuff still work? The reason is because we are looking for shortcuts. I want to know the one tip. 550 in one month, I didn't even know it was possible. Now, we like to hear these stories. I want to know what is possible. I want to know how I cut the line. And the thing is, it is not impossible to do $550,000 a month. It is actually in our revenue plan that, that will happen to us next year many times over. I will tell the story of how that happens next year if it does, but I'm not ever going to tell you a story about how something could have happened or, you know, how something may happen unless it has. I'm only here to tell you from my experience, my lived experience of what I've seen. Now, this title is very annoying. How I scaled to 550K per month with this one tip. I mean, it is primed for clicks. And the thing is, is that I want you to remember you can't always believe these things. I have a peer in this space who I support. You know, I really, I care about her and I want her business to do well, but she uses numbers like these. I scaled to $550,000 one month and I asked her about it. I said, I didn't realize that you had hit that number and I, you know, we had been speaking And she said, well, it's a little misleading. My business hit $550,000 in lifetime sales over the past three years, and I hit it in this one month, which is very interesting verbiage, isn't it? How I hit $550,000 in one month. Because what you're doing with that, and this is a sales tactic, let people infer, let people place their own assumptions on it. Now, thankfully for you, your girl's in Aries, and I am one cynical motherfucker. So for me, when I hear these numbers, I think, bullshit. With all due respect, bullshit. And I say that because I have been inside of businesses that have hundreds of thousands of followers and incredible marketing, massive email lists, and they're not doing that kind of money. So when I see that, I don't think you could never because you're not skilled. I think the logistics of that don't. The math isn't mathing here, right? So I become a little cynical. I want you to remember that when you hear things about business, you have to wonder what people's motivations are and what their goal is. With a goal like this as the title, my goal would be, I want you to think of me as so rich and different from you, and I have the keys to the castle to show you how you can act like me so that you can have this too. What 
drives me crazy about that is that I am sitting here in a dude's zip-up sweatshirt that's probably disgusting with greasy hair and sweatpants that have paint on them, just an actual trash raccoon. And I am your run-of-the-mill gal, okay? I have family issues, people who drive me nuts. I have friends that really hard to maintain relationships with, but I love them and I'm trying to stay up to speed with them. I have personal and health considerations that stress me out on a daily basis. I'm fine. I also love my business. I'm an ambitious person. I want my business to be big, but also manageable. I have a personal life. I have hobbies. I have interests. I don't come from money. I don't come from wealth. I'm figuring this shit out as I go. And I'm learning skill after skill after skill to be equipped, to be equipped to do the job. You know, I now know how to build show it websites for myself because I've built a few of them. I now know how to run my own social and run other people's social and how to deal with this kind of client, how to run a membership. Like I'm just learning as I go. I'm literally like figuring this shit out one step at a time. And I still don't know what the fuck I'm doing, but that doesn't mean I can't talk about it. I can talk about what I've learned. I can talk about what I want you to avoid. I can talk about what I want you to do. I do think with talking about those steps, there's a level of responsibility to the people you're talking to. And there's a level of selfishness that comes with a title like this, a title of how I scale to $550,000 per month with this one tip. And to go a step further, I'm going to show you how irresponsible I can be because you're going to watch me if you're watching on YouTube or you're going to listen to me if you're listening to the podcast. I'm going to make a clip that my video editor will turn into a social reel And I'm going to use this on social media to pump out this podcast. Now, I don't know if the reel is going to do well. I don't know if the video is going to do well. There's way too many factors that go into an algorithm, especially one as volatile as Instagram. But I'm also going to market this podcast like I hit $550,000. Before I do that, there's some questions that I want you to think about when you see outlandish claims. One is, if it sounds crazy, it might be. Give yourself more credit for how fucking smart you are. If you see somebody say, how I made a million dollars in two months with no team working two days a week, does that sound right to you? Doesn't sound right to me. That doesn't sound like an average thing. And I'm not here to say that the impossible is not possible, but it's improbable. And if something makes you feel like, I don't know how true that could be, ask yourself those questions. The second thing to think about is like these numbers people give you, are they lifetime numbers or annual numbers? The more I get escalated and escalated in my business, the more that we talk to similar founders and similar people in business. And the more that I find almost everybody that uses that million dollar number is a lifetime number. I made $2 million in my business. Ask them in what time frame? What time frame? Hmm? Ask them that. Ask them what opportunities they were given because there are definitely some opportunities that I'm awarded because of certain privileges or because of certain opportunities I've had in the past. Now, here's the thing. I busted my fucking ass in the fashion industry. You think entrepreneurship is hard? I think the fashion industry was considerably harder. Now, I worked my ass off in the fashion industry and I made some stellar connections that I'm still connected to to this day who keep giving me opportunities in my career, which is amazing. I can't sit here and responsibly give you tips on how to scale your business, especially with the agency. No one's really helping me with Team AP, but scale an agency without calling out the fact that I don't know if you guys know people that work at magazines like I do or work at Sephora brands like I know those people. That is an opportunity that you have to consider with people. What privileges are inherent to them? I am a white woman with no disabilities, no health problems, with a fine financial situation who is societally, conventionally semi-attractive. You know what I mean? (laughs) 
Like those are things to consider. There is a privilege of race. There's a privilege of education. There's a privilege of, I don't remember what the word is that we're using in place of homeless now, houseless, I believe it is. If you know, please let me know because I'm trying to fix my verbiage there. But there are so many privileges awarded to me that I don't have any control over that are just inherent to the process. If you are someone in a marginalized community and you hear somebody who's white and cisgender and able-bodied and is comfortable in their living situation and hasn't had extreme poverty or health issues or anything like that, and they say, I scaled $350,000 in one month and you can too, maybe not. And that's something I always try to remember is that like, I can't say that to an audience that I want to be diverse. If I want my audience to be diverse, it is very irresponsible for me to say, you can do the same thing I did. It's just not true. And that is fantasy land verbiage. And then I do want to talk about mindset because people, myself included, talk a lot about mindset. Mindset is the most important thing. It's the most important thing. Change your mindset. I bet if you listen to this podcast that is titled this way, and I keep pointing up because I think that's where the title is, but on YouTube, it's fucking down here, so I need to stop. But how I scaled to $550,000 per month with this one tip, I bet all of you would think, I bet she's going to say mindset, or I bet she's going to say team, you know, the obvious fucking ones. I bet she's going to say, I invested in the right couch. No, I didn't say any of that shit. You know, I said that fucking true. Now, mindset is truly one of the most important things in business. But the thing is, is that I can't fix your mindset and neither can you, honestly. What everybody gets wrong with the mindset piece is that you have to choose different habits and you don't have to change your habits. You have to choose different habits. It's not a conversation of fixing or changing or shifting. You have to start choosing different. Your mindset comes with that. Now, really quickly, I'm going to go into my marketing piece so that my team has a social media reel that we can cut and everybody on the internet is going to be like, wow, oh my God, I had no idea. So I'm going to take a pause and then I'm going to take a pause after. And when I come back, I want to tell you three things that I can say for certain, for certain, regardless of opportunity, regardless of privilege, regardless of any of these fucking nonsense things, regardless of all of it, I guarantee you can help you grow and scale a business. Now, let's do our little social clip. Okay. Today on the podcast, we are talking about something I've literally never said before. And I know that I said I wouldn't be marketing with any sort of sales figures this year, but something kind of crazy happened. And I do want to share why this happened. It's one tip, one trick. It's super easy. Every single one of you can do this. And when I activated this in my business, you guys, the most unbelievable thing happened. And yes, we hit $550,000 in one month. You're not going to believe it. Let's dive into how. And that's going to be cut for social. I'm going to use that for marketing. People are going to listen to this and they're probably going to turn it off. But if you've stayed, I want to give you three things that I know for certain for certain, will definitely help you on your way to success. Maybe not a $550,000 per month, you know, month, but I'd love to get you to $100,000 a year, to comfortable, to ease, to work-life balance, to your version of success. One, therapy is the most profitable action that you can take. If you want to invest in anything in your business, invest in therapy. If you are interested in therapy or the doers, my membership, choose therapy. If you are interested in therapy or the roundtable, my mastermind hybrid one-on-one -on -one coaching, choose therapy. If you are interested in hiring our agency for branding or fast forward production for podcast production or therapy, choose therapy. If you think that a coach is a bargain, at $1,000 a month, but you can't afford therapy, don't hire the coach. I don't care what expense you have to scrap. I don't care what extra money you have to make. Invest in therapy. 
entrepreneurship brings up childhood wounds like you could not imagine. And thankfully, I had been in therapy for five, six years before I became an entrepreneur. So I do think I came to battle another privilege. I do think I came to battle as an entrepreneur with an incredibly massive army behind me. But joining the entrepreneurship space and not having an army there really sets you up for defeat or a difficult fucking mental battle all the time. This is not fix your mindset. This is get professional tools from somebody who has studied how the brain works and how to activate results with humans in a really beautiful way. Therapy is so expensive. Coaches are expensive. I'm not saying spend a lot of money. I'm saying if you're looking at spending a lot of money, it should come after therapy. You don't have to agree with that, but if you try it, I don't know one person who would ever say that it didn't work for them. The second thing to think about that I know for certain can help you in your journey to success is that you should not ever make a decision about who you invest in due to their results because you should be investing in people due to their preferences. I have not heard that perspective before, and it's something I continue to say in The Doers, and I need you to hear it here. One, if you hire somebody because of their results, but they work different from you, they have different goals from you, they have different opportunities than you, they have a different lifestyle than you, those won't give you the same results. It's really hard for me to work with people who want a very chill life as an entrepreneur. I think it's a beautiful one. I think it's very possible to have a highly profitable business and a very easy lifestyle. I do tend to love working with people who are very ambitious and who want to aggressively push a boulder up the hill fast so that that boulder rolls down the hill with speed and agility. What I mean by that is like I tend to get along with people who are really pedal to the metal and then who see those results come back to them in abundance. We have somebody who came into the round table who was making five, seven thousand dollars a month, pulling her hair out so stressed, like she was just so in the trenches. And now she's at a place where she's making thirty, forty thousand a month. She's chilling, she's expanding her product suite, she's relaxed. And I'm glad that I got her there. She was ready to really push. And I like people who work like that. When people hire me, you don't need to hire me for my results. It doesn't matter what my results are. You don't need to hire me because, or come into the doers because we have a similar business. You should come into people's spaces because of their preferences. Do your values align? Do you have similar lifestyles? Can they speak to the way that you want to run your business? And then the third thing that I know for certain can help you on the road to success is that there is not one strategy, period that can outshine basic hard work. There is no course that can replace hard work. There is no strategy. There is no marketing plan. There is no Instagram strategy. There is no sales strategy that outshines hard work. When people are nitty gritty hard workers, you can tell. Those are the people that come to me and say, Okay, I've been busting my ass on Instagram. I got myself to 20,000 followers. It's a mess over here. Now what do I do? That person gets it. That's the person who says, I'm going to do anything. I'm going to just figure it the fuck out. I'm going to get results however the fuck possible. How do I now fix it? And the thing is, is that when we lean on strategy, we're typically trying to take action quicker. Oh, if I watch this email course, maybe that means I'll get on email faster. I don't think so. Oh, if I join this group about how to strategize my product suite, I'm going to make sales quicker. Yeah, maybe, but there's no replacement for hustle and for hard work. So don't think education makes up time for work. All that education does is empower you when you do get started, when you are in motion, but nothing, nothing makes momentum except for moving your feet. I can study running all day long, and I'm not a runner until I hit the pavement. That is my episode for you. I hope that gives you a little bit of a reality jolt. Let me know in the comments. Let me know in the DMs. Let me know on social if I got you. I want to know if I got you there. I want to know if I tricked you just a little bit. 
Thanks for tuning in. This was fun to do. I hope that I at least, at least made you think. I have no interest in whether or not you agree with me. We might not. Start your own podcast. I'm fine with that. But I don't need to agree with you. What I do need is to make you think. I want to make you think. I want to challenge how you think. And I want to make sure that you enter into situations with people in a way where you can feel like, I know why I'm making this investment. I trust you for the right reasons and that you're not won over by really cheap sales ploys because that's what they are. They're cheap. They're kind of disgusting. And let's leave that behind in 2024, okay? Catch you on the flip side.